Hello folks, happy Friday. Today, this beautiful Friday, I am going to enjoy this Oliva Series G. This is with a Cameroon wrapper. I'll put the information downstairs. A couple people have asked about that. Although folks, I'm telling you, if you are looking for cigar reviews, you can do better than me. And I am probably gonna be smoking the same four, maybe five cigars on these drive homes because uh, you know it's it's not a big humidor at this place and those are the ones that I like and that's what you're gonna probably get so at any rate I will put the information down below for the Oliva Series G very nice cigar um, as we pull out here you'll see I intentionally chose a uh, spot that I think <laughs> we'll let you know what the weather's been like recently now granted this is a parking lot full of it was full of snow and that's where all the snow got piled up but boy we got about five inches on is it Sunday night into Monday and well that's not too terrible it's just been really cold so it hasn't melted at all it's supposed to be warm next week although there might be some more snow this weekend so we shall see Today is the first Friday of Lent, and I am a traditional Roman Catholic, so I do observe Lent. Um, and obviously, my Lenten penance this year does not include cigars, because if it did, I would not be <laughs> enjoying this right now. Uh, but I, but I do take that sort of thing seriously, and I've been thinking a lot about. Lent and practice of self-denial this week. And it's interesting. It's one of these things that's very, very counter-cultural to, to where we are in, in our current modern-day society. But, you know, the idea to actually not avail yourself of some luxury or, or some delicacy. And, you know, why Why would anyone do that? Why wouldn't you just want to enjoy everything that you could enjoy? And it's an interesting question. And there's answers that are both the religious answers, which, you know, are the kind of the easier ones to give in a sense. But I think there's also a reasonable argument even in a in, in the mind of a, of an atheist that there's a power in, in self-denial so I'll I'll talk about that a bit and I'll try to try to give you both sides of that argument as we sit here in hopes of someday getting out into the intersection so From a religious point of view, it's it's really simple. You know, you give things up because, well, think about it this way: you, you've got the the bag of potato chips, and you open up the bag of potato chips, and you eat four or five, and then you put the bag of potato chips away. You want to eat more, but you, you deny yourself that. You instead choose to control what you can eat. Now the other approach is you open up the bag of potato chips and you eat until it's empty. And you don't even know you're eating it because you're, you know, watching TV or whatever. And, and so in that case, you haven't, you haven't possessed the potato chips. You've allowed them to possess you. And this happens a lot when we sort of give in to our... Our, our desires, in a sense, I mean, it's not like it's always bad to give in to your desires, but if we give in too fully, if we, if we overindulge in things, those things control us rather than us controlling them. 
And from a religious perspective, at least the, within the Catholic tradition, we we are trying to give ourselves to God. We, we want to we want to sort of make a a sacrifice of ourselves, and we can't do that unless we possess ourselves. And if we can't, if we don't, if we're letting other things possess us, we can't make that that gift in in the fullest sense. So the self-denial then, the practice of giving up things for Lent, the practice of uh, you know, not eating meat on Fridays, uh, the, the, that sort of thing, it's a form of self-denial that allows us to more fully possess ourselves and therefore more fully give ourselves to God. So that's the easy way. The easy way to explain it. Now what if you don't buy that sort of thing? Well, there are cultures that practice self-denial in a more common fashion than we do. So, for example, I, I read many years ago that the Japanese and, and, you know, the Japanese do a lot of things differently than, than we Westerners do. Uh, but they will if they if they receive a, a piece of mail or a package in the mail something like that they will very often set it aside and maybe it's just for a few hours maybe it's for a day but they will not give in to the desire to immediately open that uh, item and find out what's in there because they don't want the item to control them they want to control the item and it's it's more part of the culture Whereas here in, in our society, it's something that we really have to think about and try to, to impose. So when we choose to not give in to those things, when we, when we choose to deprive ourselves a little bit, and I'm not saying, you know, put on a hair shirt and whip yourself with chains and that kind of stuff, I'm just, just the, the little things. Uh, I'll give you an example. When I order iced tea, for many, many years now, I have not been putting any sugar in it. Not because I like unsweetened iced tea, but because I can drink unsweetened iced tea. And it's not bad. The sugar makes it more enjoyable, but I don't need the sugar. You know, it, it's, it's extra calories that I don't need. It's, you know, potentially unhealthy for reasons independent of the caloric content. And it's a perfectly good drink without the sugar. So I can do little things like that over time. And they add up in a very interesting way. So you begin to have more self-control. So look, if, let me put it this way. If, if you're, so if I start putting sugar in my iced tea, I'm probably not going to go out and rob a bank tomorrow. But because of, of that and probably hundreds of other things that I've done over the years, I am absolutely certain that I am not going to go out and rob a bank tomorrow or do anything like that because I have a sense of control over myself. Now, maybe you don't need the self-denial to get that sure I, I'm, I'm not arguing that this is the only way but I, I'm just pointing out that there's power in that that um, I think our culture is kind of missing out on we're, we're we're so focused on what feels good that very often we don't realize that there's value in sometimes feeling a little bit less good and I guess that's really what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is just a little bit less good can actually be very beneficial. Well, that was thoroughly entertaining, wasn't it? Uh, my dollar store camera holder just gave up the ghost. At any rate, hope you enjoyed that. Not trying to be preachy. Uh, you guys know I've talked about religion in the past, and I'm not a uh, I'm not a religious snob by any stretch. I do take it seriously in my own life, but I 
I certainly respect the choices that other people make in, in their lives. And I think that there's a lot that we can learn from one another. So I, I enjoy doing these kinds of exchanges and, and I, I look forward to hearing other people's perspectives on this, perhaps from other religious backgrounds or, or even from a secular background. Um, because I, I think it's, it's not purely a religious topic. There's, there's more to it than that. At any rate, that's what's been on my mind this week. Hopefully you've found some value in that. And I will now continue to enjoy this, uh, this Oliva cigar. Uh, Series G Cameroon. It's really very nice. And I'll wish you all a happy Friday and hope you all have a great weekend. Goodbye now.